<laughs> well, welcome back to 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. It's fucking hot outside. I still don't have my fucking computer back. The one I need. Uh, God, it's just miserably hot. But anyway, welcome to another edition of Summer of Sleaze. And let me take you back, way back actually. Ten years after I was born, to be precise, 1962, when this film unfolded on the screens of 42nd Street. The first Mondo movie, Mondo Connie, released by Time Films, which was a Jerry Gross uh, outfit. I believe this may have been one of the first things that Jerry released. So, anyway, got to figure, 1962. I mean, they've had weird shit going on on 42nd Street before, but never to the extreme of this, because this was the first Mondo movie. And it had a lot of crazy shit in it. Um, some actually comical, a lot pretty disturbing. Um, the comical stuff was we go to a German beer garden and watch a bunch of uh, drunk Germans punch each other out, fall off stools and things like that. Uh, some Australian lifeguards, women lifeguards actually, giving mouth to mouth to some willing men. Uh, some sailors on a ship running from side of the ship to side of the sh ship to see hot chicks. And then we degenerate into some really sleazy shit like a visit to the Chinese death house. Um, bikini atoll where the atomic radiation had fucked things up to the point where fish were actually becoming land creatures. And the sea turtles basically had no sense of direction, so they would lay their eggs and go inland instead of back to the water. And you see these turtles dying and shit like that. And yeah, they filmed things dying. They weren't shy about this. It was uh, uh, Jacopetto and Prosperi, two men who basically globetrotted and did this stuff, um, was the other highlight. Uh, guys that fished for sharks and people that were missing arms and legs after being attacked by sharks. And revenge on sharks is pulling one shark out of the water and shoving a sea urchin down its throat so it would die slowly. Uh, then it all climaxed somewhere in New Guinea where they were basically waiting for a feast at the end of the year. And we had a thing about clubbing pigs to death and then disemboweling them and eating them. And I think the last segment was that, again in New Guinea with the cargo cultists that they basically... Because of World War II, when all the cargo planes were sort of crashing around that area, that they thought these people were gods and basically had built a big shrine to cargo planes. So, yeah, it was pretty fucking weird and shit like that had never been seen before on, on the big screen. Um, I didn't see it on the big screen. Weirdly, I don't even know when this happened. I'm thinking toward the end of the 60s. This thing showed up on WPIX, Channel 11, Network TV, out of New York at 8 o'clock at night. That's when I saw it. I don't know how old I was. I was a kid. But I had heard about this film, you know, through my parents and, you know, newspaper ads and things like that. So, yeah, I saw it on TV, and to be honest with you, it wasn't, it wasn't cut. It was kind of fucked up, but they ran it on Network TV. Of course, there was a second film, uh... One of them wanted to do it and the other one didn't, but they owed the producers, so they put enough footage to put together for Mondo Connie 2, which basically showed dogs being bisected. Um, I'm trying to think of the highlights in this. I remember there was one thing with this guy cutting bulls' heads off with a huge sword. So this footage was a lot more gory and graphic than the first one. As a matter of fact, I mentioned the Park Theater a couple times up in the... West Caldwell, New Jersey, they ran it as a revival, back-to-back, -back, both films. But the boys weren't done yet. They would go on to do even worse shit. Uh, Africa Adido, which was basically another film that Jerry Gross picked up, gutted all the uh, nonsensical stuff and released it as Africa Blood and Guts with all the gore intact. And the other one, which was completely offensive even to me, uh, Fair Goodbye Uncle Tom which basically, somebody said it ran, I have no clue whether it ran or not. This is the type of film that would basically cause a riot in a theater. So I don't know if it ran or not. Um, Prosperi went on to direct another horror movie, actually, not a Mondo movie, something called Wild Beasts, where zoo animals get infected with uh, PCP and go and berserk killing people and shit. So 
When you think back, this, you know, Mondo Connie might have been the one that really kicked off the whole sleaze mentality in New York. I mean, it was always there, but here we are, 1962, and this thing just bleeds all over the screen with, uh, you know, kick-starting the Mondo genre, which, you know, how many Mondo movies were there? You know, Bob Cressy and uh, Lee Frost did two fake ones, Mondo Frudo and I think Mondo Bizarro. It was Mondo Mod, Mondo Baloro, uh, uh, Sweden, Heaven and Hell, and of course the big video sensation Faces of Death. And people don't realize that Faces of Death actually ran at a feature at the Liberty Theater on 42nd Street. So Mondo's not dead, it just took other forms like uh, bum fights, uh, ghetto brawls on DVD and stuff like that, and all these dipshit reality shows we have on TV. So Mondo never really died, it just morphed into something even more fucked up. So that's our show for today. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as much as I hate the WWE, they did the right thing with the little tribute to Kevin Sullivan because, like I had said, he only worked there when I started watching wrestling back in 73, and he never came back. So I thought it was very classy of them to give him like a, a two-minute promo on his way out. And uh, the wrestling world is really mourning his passing because he was one of the best, and I can't think of anybody who has anything bad to say about him. So again, thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the flip side.